Hey metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions and meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email piercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, Metalheads, after going to a Rager, what's your ultimate go-to? Mine is totally pizza. So when Overload is playing or I'm promoting the Metal Forge Live showcases or the big goddamn metal show, I go to Pizza Donisi. Pizza Donisi is gourmet artisan pizza from right here in Louisville, Kentucky. It features things like the pizza of the month, the sandwiches, and also vegetarian and vegan options, which is so totally fucking cool for all, all of it's It's awesome pizza. You definitely want to go. Hey, and also, from time to time, they do cannolis. Oh, so fucking good. You know what they said, man. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah, just like that in Godfather. They're located right next to the Mag Bar at 1396 South 2nd Street. So either stop in or call in at 502-213-0488. They're open till midnight. The witching hour. Heineken? Fuck that shit! Pabst Blue Ribbon! Hey, metalheads, you all hear me talk about Magbar all the time. It is the home to the Metal Forge Live showcases and is an integral stop in the ultimate underground metal tour schedule. They obviously feature live music, but the Magbar also has daily specials like Pint and Slice Night on Tuesdays with Pizza Donisi. But they also do Bring Your Own Vinyl on Thursdays with DJ Kent Jackson. And Finer Things Sundays. Located right next to Pizza Donisi at 1398 South 2nd Street. Open 3 p.m. to 4 a.m. seven days a week. Get your asses out to the Mag Bar. Rock out. For 45 years and keeping Louisville weird, Electric Ladyland has been there for all your eccentricities. While they do offer the best smoking supplies out on the market today, there's a whole lot more to check out. From ashtrays and blacklight posters, to records, incense and burners, and items to stock your metaphysical supply. They are open from 10 to 10, seven days a week. Located at 2325 Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky, and at electricladyland420.com. Roll out. In a broken wasteland, I come to my fire and place your blood and steel. Upon my fire
What's going on, metalheads? Thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of The Metal Forge. My name is Mark Jackson, and I am your host. You know, I quit saying that for like the longest time because it's like, hey, you all know who I am. I'm the one doing the show, and my name's on top of it, and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you know, I was watching uh, recently Pixel Dan on YouTube, and even on his videos, he still announces himself is, you know, Pixel Dan and, and all that, which is totally cool because, hey, it's like, yeah, if you don't, if you could just put it on in the background until it comes on, it's, it's like awesome. But anyways, I'm already starting this show derailing here, but because I haven't even given my guest yet, but before the, the guest, because that's why he's here, Hello, Mr. Jason Gardner of the Heavy Metal Wasteland, Aeohorn, Temptations, Wings, Mudhorn, Flamekeeper, Steel and Stone Fest, Hot and Dog Connoisseur. And importantly, husband and father of two, and, and, and stepfather of one. For also sure. Also, Star, Star Wars enthusiast, uh, and, and soul proprietor. So yeah, dude, what's up, man? Not much. I was just uh, actually uh, editing this uh, super late uh, Alehorn video I recorded today. Nice, so yeah. Be looking for that, be looking for that soon. Um, I would highly recommend this one. Actually, there's a lot of like cool shit we talked about. There. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, uh, we it. won't give a spoiler based on uh, timeline, but I will give a spoiler based on timeline. Uh, is you know I do want to say happy late birthday because by the time this is dropping it is your is after your birthday. Did you get any cool things? Did you get any new albums? I think you got this copy of this album from the band on today called Mega, Mega Colossus. I have pre-ordered the um, the bone uh, color variant. Yeah, yeah. and Never did recall. did you get it in time of the album release? I haven't checked the mail today, but we'll find out. Yeah, for sure. You know, absolutely. Dude, so did you... Okay, so you ordered the copy. Did you listen to anything yet? Or you wait... Or you... Because we, we had this discussion with Night Demon last year. Because you listened to it digitally first. Because the snafu with the fucking... Uh, the deal. Yeah. With the box set. And I waited and I actually bought it on vinyl. And like showed it off to you like a prick. Because... Yeah. You, and listen to it on vinyl first and immediately fell in love with it. Well, I'm a big Night Demon fan, so if, if I don't get it, I'm going to listen anyway I can. But uh, I don't know if I'll listen to this one on vinyl first or not. Because, like, dude, it's hard. To, I have to be uninterrupted when I listen to vinyl for the first time. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, my backlog is insane. I haven't listened to the new Howlin' Giant vinyl yet. I've had oh. it since, like, October. So. I wish yeah, I could I get, have I gotten really the. Uh... I, have to have, I have to be uninterrupted and have, like,. 45 minutes where I know this is this is going down. Now. So, do you have two turntables in your house? Do you have one upstairs and downstairs? No. Uh, mine is only upstairs because Jackie said that if I put one downstairs, she would never see me again. And she's probably true. That's probably true. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, it would be so easy to just go downstairs and put on a vinyl and just, like, mute the TV and watch, you know... Watch the fucking I don't know the Cowboys choke I don't know somebody choke. I have to have I have to have full volume for that uh, for that. Kind do of you fun. scream at the TV during football season? Sometimes, sometimes. Do you do you do you have a foam brick? No, but I do have a. Uh, I don't know if I have a. I do have a challenge flag. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna get you a foam brick. But yeah, like I said, I mean, I got. I'm a Panthers fan. My season's been done for about a month now. Uh, also, uh, RIP to Aaron uh, Dolphin, who uh, crashed and burned pretty hard. Yeah, there in right. City. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, at the time of recording this, whoever's left should be a pretty good Super Yeah, Bowl. it'll there's, be good. There's, there's, some, there's some good teams in this uh, playoffs this year now. It's, it's pretty, I was pretty happy with the selection of, uh, you know, not the usual suspects. I mean, there is a usual suspect, but then there's like, you know, there was like Detroit who hadn't won in like 32 years, finally got him one. You know, yeah, right. Stuff like that, you know, it's cool. And uh, then you got like Texans with like a rookie quarterback and a first-year coach, like you know, 
doing awesome. Like they've been doing it for years, and it's it's a cool mix. So I'm pretty, I've been pretty excited this uh, playoffs. Hell yeah, man, and that, and that's cool because you know this time of year is always busy for for you personally because you've got a lot of birthdays, you've got football season and playoffs. So the the ale horn sometimes suffers, the mud horn sometimes suffers. It might be a little bit later on the release, but you know. Well, the ale horn suffered because I had two in December, and then the holidays kind of got in the way for both of them. Yeah, that's true. And then, like, by the time it was like too late, it was just like I wasn't even gonna worry about trying to get one out like the week of Christmas and New Year's. So I was like, well, I'll just double up, and then like holidays were still affecting but now i'm starting to whittle down my uh, backlog i got two more ideas i got one more kind of confirmed to get going so i should be pretty good so dude mega colossus today uh yep. awesome fucking dudes uh north yeah, Carolina. Met one. we met one um, yeah for yeah, sure still stone last year was- for sure north carolina band fucking awesome fucking Epic power metal. You know, that's one of my uh, Alehorn uh, ideas, actually, is I want to convene, like, the best of the uh, eastern part of the state power metal guys. Yeah. And just talk about why that, that area is so damn proficient of producing really damn good bands. Like, well, I mean, it's, it's it's pretty crazy if you look at it. I mean, there's Cursor Conformity, which isn't really power metal, but they're based out of Raleigh because three of them, well, yes. two of them now are from Raleigh area. And then you got a lot of power metal bands in offshoots. Like, so for Twisted Tower Dyer, you have like, there's like three bands off that. There's a uh, Wallet Brigus, and there's a uh, Municipal Waste. Metal bands. And then you got Children of Reptile, Mega Colossus, Mortal Man. Um, and then there's uh, Salvation, which, uh, you know, uh, Carlos passed away many years ago, but uh, it, it was still uh, somewhat of a big deal around here. And uh, probably some other ones I'm not thinking of, but yeah, it's like pretty rich for uh, power metal for some weird reason. Honestly, dude, the whole North Carolina deal is so cool to me because of that. But it's not just there because it's it's like Richmond, fucking like Wilmington, Raleigh, Charlotte, and, and it does bleed over into the Asheville scene too. And yeah. then it goes back fucking like down south, like into like fucking Savannah and Athens and all that with like the Shade Beast and then the Swamp Metal type shit. Right. And it's just like this whole fucking cool thing where all of like all of the bands from that area could fucking play together. Yeah, like, a lot of them do. <laughs> yeah, and, and you all do, and it is awesome. But it's just like you have this whole like tour circuit that you could hit. You could do like Monday and then Tuesday, and then, you know if you really wanted to. I agree. Yeah, we we never actually played Raleigh or Women's before. We want to try to get over there this year. Well, yeah, we want to, to. We want to try to focus on like seeing, like playing in the state more. Anyway, so which is totally cool. So, dude, I think we're gonna play some fucking. Uh, what, dude? I always say that. I think we're gonna do this when I know we're gonna do it. We always fucking do it. It's like so. Why fucking beat around the bush? Oh, and by the way. For anybody out there, if if digital is your thing and you want to fucking support a band, go to the fucking Bandcamp link for this fucking band. Because if you buy their entire discography on Bandcamp, it is twelve dollars and thirty cents. Yeah, digitally, and that is seven fucking releases. Yeah, it's also like. It's probably like 10,000 Spotify plays. Fuck yeah. You know, I'm going to go ahead and just because of what it is, and I think, I think I know who's going to announce this one. Oh, wow. Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory.
I've really got to think of something else to say because I'm always being like, hey, metalheads, here we are this week, you know, and I don't want to do that anymore. So I got to think of something to say, like, what's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> no, uh, dude, uh, Bill, is it? It's Bill, not William, right? Because uh, Bill, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fisher from the band Mega Colossus is here with us today, dude. What the fuck is up, man? Oh man, well I I well I just got out of work, so there's that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we're uh, it's uh, it looks like kind of a cool year for us. So th- thanks for including us on your in your list of you named off some bands we were just talking and and. Uh, it's a pretty awesome set of folks that you're, you've included in your your podcast. I'm, I'm glad yeah, I know, man. Like, so by the time this drops, I can kind of tell you because, like, they're, they're already going to be in the future. So, uh, last week you all had an album come out, which is Showdown. Because this, by the time this drops, it's the it's going to be the second of February. And um, I couldn't get you all in on the release date because I also had Lucifer that day. Oh, that's awesome. And that, yeah, totally fucking rad. But the new album, holy shit, like, I love the fucking, the first track on it. Uh, That's what, at the time, that's what I got to hear. And it's just epic as hell. And the the gunslinger with the skull face on the cover, I love it. <laughs> oh, man. He's my new favorite. I, I I want him to be our Eddie, basically. It's, it's, I don't, I, you know, I, I, we need to give him a name. I think I call him Skeleton Cowboy, and I think he's the shit. But uh, yeah, that, that's we're gonna. I want to do more with, with Skeleton Cowboy. He's kind of. I, I like the cut of his jib. So. Absolutely, and it's just like this. I I don't know how to explain it. Like it's the the cover is almost like print, like print art. It's kind of rough. He's definitely the in focus part and but it almost has like this old school like real old school newspaper esque kind of drawing to it. You know, our, our dude, Chris, who he does the majority of the art that we've ever used, um, he's, he can do everything. It's, it blows me away every time he, he pops up with something. Sometimes I'm just like, holy shit, dude, are you okay? You know, but I mean, it's, he can just churn out disturbing artwork after disturbing artwork. He's, I think he's crazy as hell, but he's so good and he's so creative. He's hilarious, too. Um, and... Yeah, he popped up with that, and I, that is a to- that's almost a different style from anything he's done. It is a different style from anything he's done for us before. He keeps just popping up with new shit. He did an oil on canvas for for uh, that, there's, that's an actual oil on canvas on uh, Hyperglaze to uh, two three records back. Um, so he can do that. He he did the crazy rip time thing that most people I think are disturbed by it. I love it. Dude, that is amazing. I love that as well, and I love how it hit, the frame on it is, is is there too, and it's just the whole outlook of that. And I think you you see a lot of people doing those now. That style of uh, what is it down down classing artwork is what the, I believe it's what it's called, where you take like uh, an image that's like a noble person and you put like the head of a dog on it or you put like I don't know ATATs in the fucking pa- uh, pastoral <laughs> scene you know <laughs> yeah, it's the same concept posters. yeah it was, it was one of my favorite tour posters it was another thing that Chris did and it was this uh, I mean essentially it's an astronaut kind of a character with a big big gun it, it reminds me it's, it's a lot like the Slough Fig um traveler cover kind of but it's a t-rex head <laughs> nice it looks so good i got it it's it's on my wall it's in a frame it's hell yeah really and you know the rip time uh cover i love as well because that's like extremely like heavy metal magazine art where that came from was we we um why did we do that let's see i think so 
it's all like wordplay. I think we were talking about just the way the songs were coming together. We're like, this this shit all is kind of, you know, a little more ripping than stuff we've been doing before. Like, then somehow we're like, let's call it rip time. Because, you know, it's it's rip, this album. It's, it's rip time. But but then, then it was like, what if it's like a rip in time? And then we started shooting the shit and we came, we're like, what about the chaos kind of shit that comes from time being ripped up? Nice. I don't know how. No, absolutely. That's a great. That's that. a great concept. Because and then it was uh, it was Event Horizon was referenced. And as soon as Event Horizon was referenced, you can kind of that to me is is what I think Chris ran with. He's like, oh shit, yeah, and and you know creates this like chaos multiverse thing that's happening. I don't even know. I don't think there's necessarily a story there although on the back cover of rip time that little dude is a space version of the tinker tanner character he's a salesman he's a little vendor nice. <laughs> traveling, traveling vendor but chris made a, a alien version of of what was originally and when i say all this stuff out loud it sounds fucking ridiculous but <laughs> But no, see, we all have the idea. We all have our own thing, whether, you know, my band does the same thing where, you know, I have, over the last uh, EP, I have essentially made a space theme. And because the last EP was called Tales from Twin Earth. And it's about a concept where everything is exactly the same except for the water molecule is different on that what? planet. That's clever as hell. That's amazing. And so would you still call it water? Because it is different, but everything else is exactly the same. That's funny as hell. That's 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 weird. You, you, that's your wholesale your concept uh yeah to a degree amazing and well no it's not my concept it is an action it's like a uh it's like a like a, a part of like membrane theory where you know where intersecting dimensions and shit like that are all cross fucking it's it's a whole thing oh, that's awesome <laughs> that's really, really cool yeah I'm man, all, that's, dude that's i'm like amazing. a i'm a I'm a horror fanatic about like uh, movies like Phantasm, so, oh, <laughs> so yeah. Phantasm. that's where it comes from. So, and there's not a bad Phantasm movie. I don't no. know how far through the series you've gone, but they're every movie. Oh yeah, even Ravager is even Ravager is great. You know, and and I love that aspect of it. So I started researching what like Michael was talking about in there, and I was like, holy shit, this is really fucking cool. <laughs> well, I love that you're like a phantasm deep cut expert because I'm not. I confess. I just love every time I, I put anybody puts one on. I'm like, God damn, these movies are all cool as shit. But uh, yeah, I love that you actually got. Oh yeah, the lore. I mean, honestly, I, I I'm surprised. I'm surprised I don't have a tall man tattoo yet. That would be fucking sweet. I mean, I need it. I mean, maybe that could go on my villain arm. <laughs> so if you have a villain arm, you definitely use these. Tops. Oh yeah, because you know I've got Hordak and Evil in there already. So, <laughs> nice. Uh, a- but anyways, we're here to talk about Mega Colossus, and from everything that you know, I remember seeing it when it was originally Colossus. You saw us as Colossus? No, I did not see you, but like, Uh-oh. you know, the the music. I was going to say, we haven't been to Louisville. In, yeah, it's uh, been a long time, yeah. 13 years, I'll bet, since we've been to Louisville. Right. Maybe more. Yeah. But, and so I look on Metal Archives and everything, and it, and it says change name, and then there's always the links to the other bands with the same name at the, at the time, like, not to be confused with Colossus, stoner oh, heavy it, metal from Vicksburg, Mississippi. I think at one point our metal, one of the metal archives or one of those compilation, you know, like wiki sort of music pages, totally just had another band's picture. Oh, I believe <laughs> it for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was going to be a pain in the ass. That's a, that's totally the reason for MAGA. We would still be called Colossus if, if we could have just lived with it. But there's well, just so any of them. <laughs> but the, th- the, the thing about it was, is like, so I look through them and like every single one of them, except for the, the tech death from Illinois, have all changed their name or disbanded. Is that right? God damn it. Yeah, and they're the one that they've been around since like 2021. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> but so the I was seriously hoping that it was because that like it would have been an amazing joke if you had if if say a member just was just like he was just like gone from the band and he was like, well, I'm going to fucking do this on my own and keep the name. Like he was an original member and there was some bad blood and you all then just named yourselves mega Colossus. Like you all leveled up and he didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, <It> was, <laughs> absolutely. We actually, there was a joke recently and I, I, I kind of want to do it. I, I think we can still pull it off. It, there's, I think there's enough ex members uh, from Colossus, that there could be a Colossus and Mega Colossus show. <laughs> the only like one shared member or something. I, it's, I mean, it's been a while. This band's getting old. We're we're, we're approaching twenty years. Somebody pointed that out the other day, and it freaked me out. I was like, God damn, that can't be. But it it can, and <laughs> time does do that. Um, but yeah, yeah, we were because we're, we're still in touch with everybody. Right, we're all still friends. It's just. People had to do different shit for sure, and, and switch switch dudes every now and then. We, actually, I think we figured out the rip time and um, uh, showdown are the only two records with identical lineup. Wow! <laughs> every other record has some sort of lineup change. You're you're just like us, stuff. man. My band's that way too. <laughs> for sure a lot, to, uh, a lot of moving pieces to to have, you know, making it all work and if you're, if you're busy enough or not busy enough you know i mean this, everything has to really land exactly right for everybody and that's so hard to do it is it absolutely is and you know we averaged a guitar player a year for for five years that's pretty quick yeah it's <laughs> like uh mike was on this album Jacob was on this album. Cheyenne was on this album. Cheyenne was on this EP. Uh, but then uh, then the drummer was not on the set. <laughs> so we had the, that was back about a decade ago at this point. So for sure. Uh, but that's awesome that you all could do that. That would be an interesting, uh, a dual build weekend. Like, I mean, I just want to see what would happen. That could be really great. I, I guess Sean would have to sing in both of them. I might. I mean, theoretically, I guess I might have to play guitar in both of them, but I wouldn't have to. I think we've got enough, enough guitars. That could work so, are out you and Sean the only original members? I, kind of, and I mean, if you if you want to get technical about it, I came. I played the third show. There was a guy before me for a minute, and I don't think there may even be. There's not a song that that was played then, and I think they only had like four or five songs, and it was this brand new thing. The guys that I knew from other bands were doing, and I was like, "This is pretty awesome." And, and I was in between stuff, and pretty, pretty kind of Jones to play something. And I was like, "Damn, these!" I mean, I knew them, but I didn't right. know they could do that style. And I was like, "Well, this is the shit that I've been wanting to do for a long time." And then. uh and then the one guy was moving away. You know, basically they just played a couple of shows, and then the one guy moved away. And I was like, I mean, let's do some stuff. And and that was so. Sean is truly the only original guy. But, I mean, like, that's a long time ago. That was that was actually that was maybe twenty whole years ago. At that point. Definitely. And, you know, I think it's awesome to see these, uh, what I'm referring to almost now is like legacy bands like you guys. And uh, back a couple of weeks ago, Stonecutters from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, these uh, these bands that have had close to a 20-year career, yeah, we've had uh, a lot of member changes, but still going strong, you know, almost like Anvil at that point. We all have our cool shit that we do and we continue to do. 
And hey, if I'm not on the next album, well, I'll be on the next album because that's how it is. But if somebody else is off on the next album, that's how I've always seen it. Uh, I was talking with uh, Brian about that, Brian Omer from Stonecutters, on his episode where I saw the liner notes of Another Perfect Day, uh, the reissue, when I was like 24 years old. And it was Lemmy writing something about the album, about how it came into having Brian Robertson in Motorhead. And he was 38 when Fast Eddie Clark had left the band and he got pissed and he was just like, you know, I'm too old to start over. Back in a fucking garage, practicing songs, writing songs. I've got to keep going. Yeah, well, I mean, right. I mean, I, I, I feel that way all the time. <laughs> but it's never really that big of a, it's not like it's a problem because, you know, you always know somebody. Yeah, for sure. And that's what I love about that is because it's you have a legit career of music, you know, for the last 20 years, you know, 19, but who's counting, right? But that's so fucking cool to to have bands that have catalogs of music still. That's a that's good. To, that's nice to hear that. I you know, honestly, I, every time I hear it, I'm just like, god damn, I'm getting old. Um, but then, you know, that's a nicer way to think about it, <laughs> the way you're thinking about it. Um, now it's cool. It is cool. I, and I wish our catalog, I wish we'd been, I wish we'd had more time over the years to, to be more prolific. We, you know, I think we've, we stepped it up in the last, for the last three or four records, really that since we changed the name, I feel like we picked up the pace a little bit, kind of felt a little more of a, of a. Like a, a drive to to do another record, you know. We're like we're working on another record. We're just starting, but we're we're already starting to work on the next record. You know, you gotta as soon as you know everything takes forever. So if you don't start ahead of time, you before you know it, you, you're four years in between records, and that sucks. Yeah, it really does. Uh, our last EP, what I was telling you about earlier, was 2019 <laughs> when it came out. So. Uh, we were supposed to be releasing a single this year uh, on a split seven inch, hopefully. Uh, and then we're gonna write a new EP, I believe. So, yeah, man, it, it's you kind of have to put yourself on a schedule. Oh yeah, schedule, you have to. Schedule is a bad term, but we uh, you got to have a goal. <laughs> you got to put a deadline on your ass. <laughs> we had hard so for for showdown. It was kind of funny. Those are, our drummer just just was like, I booked us, blah 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 dates at Warrior, and and we were all like, huh, well, I guess we better get to writing <laughs> because you know all of a sudden we really didn't. I think we might have had the inklings of one or two songs, and all of a sudden there was this date that was right there, not that far away. I think it was God. I think. I, I really can't can't put all this time together. It was yeah, we did it was so fast. It's essentially we wanted to tour on rip time and we really kind of couldn't because of the, the pandemic, yeah. Cuz covid, yeah. We basically wrote that that was a pandemic album, you know. And then uh and then we were just itching that as soon as things were starting to open up, we're like, let's get, you know, let's get back to, that. you know, it's the goal lately has kind of become have a good, good Europe tour and, and go regionally in the U S because it's, it's frankly, it's easier to tour in Europe than it is in the U S. Um, and so we're like, well, let's get back over there. But then all of a sudden all the things that have been scheduled during for the year, you know, 20, 20 um got pushed to 21 22 for you know we can't go back until 23 so that was just a few months ago and then we're like almost made it the whole goal was to have um we, we, we really actually could have done it we did sort of make it it would have been really rushed but we did have everything in time to tour on uh, showdown 
back in um, September. Right. But then it seemed like it was such a rushed release. And, you know, you, you can generally bank on everything being held up a little. And by the time all the pieces, you know, we're looking at the set of things that has to happen perfectly for us to just have the fucking thing in hand. It's like, should we should we say this is the showdown tour? We're not even sure we're going to have the shit. Right. And so maybe not a good idea. And then Enrico at Cruz del Sur was pretty, he was pretty into the idea of putting it, putting it back a little bit because that, that gives him more time to, to do his end of things, you know, get the word out before pulling the trigger. It really was just going to be like, how quick can we get it pressed? And then bam, it's out. And then we tour on it. But then we're like, and hey, we never toured on Rip Time. So fuck it, this is Rip Time tour. <laughs> so, well, was, yeah, and I mean, I think you have to do it. I think it's healthy to do a mixture of both, you know? You do what you... You know, as much as it sucks to sit there and say, see what sticks, I mean, you almost kind of have to when you're in that situation of where you've been, where you've had uh, two albums come out and you have to, you know, really discuss like, okay, how do we approach these shows now that we're supporting essentially two albums, which I was, I've always been like, I didn't have that problem because we didn't put anything out. Uh, during, but that's one of the things that all these bands that I've wondered how do you how do you curate your set now based off of you know if you've put out three or four albums in the last two years, which there are bands that do. There's been there are bands out there that put shit out at breakneck speed, and it's almost hard to keep up, uh, especially if you're a uh, uh, like a collector of like the variants and shit uh, on a lot of these, but. You know, that's how I look at it. Is I've always looked at it to be able to play live. It's like so. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the the focus of the whole thing. It's all, it's all. It's funny how much trouble we put into the writing, and and actually, the writing and recording the record really is that's pretty joyful too. And we, you know, we're a bunch of dipshits, and we have hilarious times doing that part of things. But it really all does focus around. It having something nice to get people to come to the show. Sure. <laughs> and then and the shows are more fun. And and you can have more of them. You can go further in, in cooler places. You know, that's that's a pretty cool no. reason to do all. It's a lot of trouble for like a 45 minutes of cool shit in some town far away. <laughs> but it feels very worth it most of the time. All the time. You know... Too. I think it's always worth it. And maybe that's because I still have like the, the blinder, the love blinders on still, but it's I like, it. to me, <laughs> to me, the thing about it is it, this is my outlet and this is, you know, a lot of people's outlet, whether you're a musician or a fan and that's the cool thing about it is being able to go to a show and see a kick-ass band or be in a kick-ass band and get that mutual stress alleviation and just fucking be able to cut loose. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. We've, we've actually, like recently, we've, we got to know a bunch of people, and I, I never thought of it that way. I really didn't, you know, I always thought it kind of was it in my brain i would look at it and think of it as it's work we're, we're no is no not at all at all it's as as fun all just fun and games vacation time and we're lucky that we can get somebody to come to this thing i never thought of it as anybody else's outlet i oh, thought that wow. we were a distraction to other people's frankly it, it it is at times felt like we we're a distraction to people's drinking but <laughs> you know but not really but at the same time, I've we've gotten to know some people recently that that's just what they do. They go to shows. They go to shows with the same level of enthusiasm that we put in. We write music and, and put shit together. And I'm like, oh, shit. This is a two-way street. That's kind of awesome. Oh, <laughs> I, never, sure. I never thought of it that way. But, you know, we got to know. I mean, I feel like everybody knows Kid Eggman. 
you know, he every fast, you know, and he sees everything. And he, but it is a need for him. He doesn't. There's not a like like he suffered as badly when there was no shows as all the bands suffered not being able to play the shows. It was right. absolutely as big of a thing for him not to be able to see these these things. It was an, it's pretty amazing, and, and that's like his that's his band. He basically has a band. It's him traveling around seeing bands. It's awesome. Oh, for sure. And uh, I fucking can't remember his name. I fucking apologize. Oh, my God, that his name has slipped out. Uh, it's like right on the tip of my tongue, and I can't fucking think of it. it uh, he is from uh, Maryland. Completely drove to see Twisted Tower Dire at Steel and Stone this past year. A fucking seven hour drive. Fuck. Yeah, that's awesome. That I is. Mean, and that is the it. fucking support. <laughs> and that dude kicks ass. And, you know, but people like that kick ass that, you know, would drive seven hours for a Those very a niche, a very niche fucking festival show. Was that Ray Dorsey? No. I can't remember okay. who it was, actually. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kicking myself in the dick right now for this because I should know because it was so fucking awesome. And he had actually checked out everybody on, on like their band camps and shit that were playing too. And so it was totally fucking rad. But dude, what do you all have in mind for 2024? Now that the album is out, what are you all planning to do? I, you know, we've about got half the year planned out. It's it's, it's funny how that works. Uh, we got like you know we're trying to do a weekend a month between now and when we go to uh, we got a German tour coming together, and it's about half put together. We're gonna go to Headbangers Open Air, which is a that that's a I actually in the course of of getting all that organized, I found. I looked at the, the email chain or I was searching for, through my email for the for headbangers just to make sure I got the last one. And I scrolled down a little bit and there was a there was an email from twenty fourteen that was that said we we don't think you're you're known enough here, but we like what you're doing. Blah blah blah. It was basically a refusal from fucking twenty fourteen. I didn't remember. Wow. I mean I and now you're doing it, man. And we finally get to do it. So, I mean, that's how long it took us to... I've always kind of thought that this was the fest that kind of seemed like bands that, bands that we would play shows with if, if we could make it work. You know what I mean? And For then, sure. And there's a bunch of them on it, and some of the bigger names are... You know, I mean, it's, it has historically been all the shit that I've been listening to in the last few years and yes I'm, I mean for sure man that's awesome and that is a great feeling to to get to the to the deal where you're like this is what my like my top level my mecca what I want to do is you know I want to play this fest I you know the bucket list and honestly I would you know this is this fest and and I feel like you know, I don't know. There, there's a lot. Of them. There's so many of them, but the, the ones that always come to mind when, when people talk about uh, German fests and that are in our style, you know, everybody mentions Keep It True. Years ago, we played Hard in the Steel, which was Oliver's smaller fest, and that was awesome. Um, so that that seemed, you know, looking at that too, but we're, we're like, then all the while, I'm just like, man. Headbangers open air always has all the the thrash bands that I want to see and and the kind of party metal bands that I want to see. You know what I mean? It's like it's a little, it's less geared toward nostalgia and more toward what's actually going on. Oh, for sure, yeah. And awesome. and back in uh, 2022, I got to do that as well with Blades of Steel up in Wisconsin, and. I wanted to play the first one and it was just like, ah, so we got to play the second and that was rad as hell. And it's so cool to see the bands like this year and yeah. And to see where, where they go. 
So that's a big thing. I mean, that 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 fest alone, you know, we built the whole idea of going going over again so soon. I mean, we really it doesn't seem like it. I mean, it seems like it's been a while back, but when I think about it, September's not that far back. No, we're not three months you know, ago. Not even a year apart. By the time we go back, because we're going back in uh, um, late July is when that happens. So. Um, we have that festival and then the Berg brand open air, which is a fest in front of a castle. This seems pretty awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, come on. I, and, you know, that's why I would love to play something like Download because, you know, it was Donington Fest and the castle's over off, off in the hill and shit. Yeah. Actually, our drummer and I got to do Download as fill ins in a band called Bloody Hammers years ago. Um, that was. That was about ten years ago, nice. and uh, it, yeah, it is. That was fun as shit. I, it, it's so big, and I remember being like, "Wait, really? We unload our gear, and then we get on a bus to go to the stage we're going to be at, <laughs> and the, the gear gets delivered later." It's it's real big big process they have going on there. I, that's the only experience with a, a and it's ran extremely organized and everything. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the way, because there's so much shit happening and, and so many people come in. And I mean, we were in there when they opened the gates and it was the, it was the most hilarious, like nerd stampede I've ever seen. Uh, who, who awesome. did you get to, who cool did you get to see from the side of the stage? Uh, we, well, we met, uh, we played like a band, like one band before, I think, or you know what, Huntress might have gone right after us. I, so we met Huntress. Nice. That was pretty cool. Yeah. The band called, they called themselves Baby Godzilla at the time, but I think they're called Heck now. They were one of the most, like, wild stage shows I've ever seen. Um, Opeth was in a tiny, like a tent, like one of the small stages. And that was one of the nicest, like, one of the best sounding shows I think I've ever seen. They were because you know they're open up they're like surgeons they're, yes very much yeah it's and, and it was really intricate and amazing to, and and to see that up close like in a tent i mean give me a break that was fucking awesome it was funny he, he was like uh at one point in between songs because uh Ecker, Eckerfeld, um he's hilarious like he's he's got that dry i guess uh you know he's he's got that scandinavian humor but it's super dry, but he'll just say hilarious shit. And he goes like to the mic, and he's like, "You can hear Avenged Sevenfold playing right now." <laughs> and then he, and he, he tunes a little bit, and then he gets back to the mic. And he goes, "I do not like it." <laughs> yeah, uh, just like <laughs> yeah, uh, those are those are always the funny moments. Like this past year, wasn't it uh, Mustaine that went off the deep end on stage because of uh, Judas Priest? Uh, uh, tech was was tuning. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Yeah, and Dave had a meltdown, as Dave does. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, sorry, dude. Priest got a tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> dude, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to derail. This is five random questions about you as a person. These are fucking from interview decks all over any like. Whatever I fucking bring it from. It's just whatever's next. I'm not sure I count as a person, dude. I'm, I'm just saying. Dude, yes, we all <laughs> do. We all, e even <laughs> fuck. No, no, we don't. No, we all don't. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's one person in particular I could think of that does not qualify as a fucking person. I won't mention <laughs> names. <laughs> Dick bag. Yeah. Vomit. Uh, anyway, here we go. Are you good for this? I'm good. Yeah, let's go. What grounds you when you have to make a tough decision? Oh, interesting. Wow, that's tough. Um, <clears throat> honestly, logic. I think, like, like seriously, I I, I tend to be like it, people who know me probably don't feel like this is immediately evident, but also think of me as a logical person and. And uh, I do tend tend to try to solve a problem as a from a detached perspective and, and treat it like a 
I fix things for a living. So <clears throat> it's uh, it seems like like if I have to make a, a, a difficult decision, I'm going to look at all how the pieces all fit together and see which is the, the most likely to work and most likely to be, you know, you have to weigh any way. Of course, the things like, like bands, <clears throat> one of the things you're, you're going to be weighing is, is an intangible, like how funds are going to be, <laughs> and, True. but that's important, you know, so I can, I feel like I, it's necessary to quantify that sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. It is because you could sit there and, you know, you get to the point where you're, if you're planning like anything more than like two or three days, then you're really got to look into shit like itineraries and making sure you're where you need to be when you need to be. And then, you know, if you're, if you're an independent band and doing that, you're more than likely you're doing it for yourself uh, and you don't have somebody managing you on the road, which can be hard sometimes. Now, doing that as a as a collective, which is you know the way the way we do it, <clears throat> everybody kind of takes up. In this last tour, I kind of was the point guy on on where we were going to stay and stuff like that. But but really, everybody shared it. You know, I, Sean Sean, our singer, will tend to to be the the merch dude and and but everybody jumps in and helps wherever they can yeah but yeah it, it does end up being it is problem solving after problem solving kind of thing and, and it's you end up it's not super efficient to do it as a group of people but you don't want to do anything that anybody doesn't want to do so it's hard right. to do something that everybody wants to do but yet you have to do something now because shit's got to happen for sure you have to be which is kind of what's cool about having a tour book is that everything that's happening is based on something that has to happen you're not it's so so the problem solving isn't something you can put off it's something that you absolutely have to do right now and you're also running around seeing cool shit drinking beer and, and all that so it's, it's like you know, it's not like it's work <laughs> so, but it is problem solving. You know? So when you're going over to Europe, uh, are you uh, riding with somebody, or do you all drive yourselves? Do you all, or do you all have that capability? So when when Doza and I filled in in Bloody Hammers, it was just lucky stroke. <clears throat> the uh, they just they had a drive. They had money behind them. They were on Napalm Records, and, and the guy who, who does that band has, I think he's got some money. And, and between him and Napalm, the thing was put together really well. And uh, they had a driver, and it was, you know, a nice sprinter van, dude from Poland, going to drive us around. And I was like, man, this is living the life. This is luxury. And then we got in the van and just hit it off with the dude. Like, he's he's an old he's an old punk rock guy, kind of, you know, maybe not quite my age, but, you know, we, we have a lot of the same touchstones in, in, in the – punk rock into things which is a chunk of my my I, you know the, all the pieces that, that make you uh, yeah uh, definitely uh, place you. <laughs> and uh and so we, we knew some of the same stuff that was kind of you know obscure yeah stuff. like kindred more, spirits yeah yeah we're in and, and he's a you know he appreciates the the getting it done into things which i just even if i'm shitty at it sometimes i do respect that and and uh and and he's just a he's a cool dude and he's he's tough as fuck he's you know he's he's got his own business all he does is drive bands around and uh his name's Wojtek he's he's uh he was living in they call it Wrocław which if you look on a map it says Rock Claw <laughs> right <laughs> it's uh in central Poland we actually got to go to his his town in that tour so it was cool to get to know him, and then then when it came time, a couple of years, three years later, probably by the time it was all done, I bet it was almost three years later when we got the Heart of the Steel invitation, and we're like, well, we gotta we gotta talk to Voitech. And it's funny at that point, everybody was just calling Votech because somehow somebody misspelled his name, and, and he just dealt with it. He's just, he just didn't even correct us. Was, I don't. I mean. I don't know how familiar you, you are with the Polish language, but man, 
it's fucking crazy. Right. And everybody, everybody in Poland is a ling- is in my mind a, an advanced linguist because a they can speak Polish, which is fucking crazy. I didn't learn one word the whole time I was there. <laughs> and B, they all also speak all these other languages because of where they are. They intersect with, with everything. So there's very few people from that country who don't speak at least two or three languages, like well. Right. And and so you know, Wojtek I think speaks. I think I've heard him speak four or five different languages just a little bit. It's pretty awesome. He's an impressive dude. So we're like, let's see if I can do it. And and sure enough, he could do that one. And or no, that's right. Twenty seventeen, he was he had double booked. He'd gotten a new van, and he was booked on a big one that he couldn't couldn't not do. And he got our other friend Kuba, also from or he was Kuba's from Warsaw. And uh, and was like Kubel, I, I'll I'll find a driver. I'm sorry, I have to do this other thing, and and that's how we met. And I haven't seen Kuba since then, and that actually makes me kind of sad because he also is the shit. So these guys know each other through bands and and through being drivers. Oh and, yeah, so it's almost like kind of a club. And uh, so that was awesome. And then when we went back the next year, Boytech was like, I got you this time. And and so right yeah, on, so, man. And, we're trying to go through him every time because we do have a good time with him and he is so solid and yeah it, he's as reliable as, as things can be dig that, that. fuck and he's not very expensive <laughs> so. well and that's another thing that's yeah <laughs> that's an yeah i mean metal on a budget he has money for it he he uh he has a nice van and he has a, a back line that's workable for us you know it's not fancy shit but you know i can play through a 5150 all day it's fine it's great and then he's got a you know enough of a drum set does is fine with it and none of it costs very much we can it's it's barely within our budget because our budget sucks but it's if hey, it's within our budget it works that's so exactly can, right that's exactly right uh what is the most touristy thing that you do most touristy thing I do. It's been a while. I did used to love to go to to things like you know like south of the border, and, and I always wanted to see the world's largest ball of twine, which I never actually did. Touristy thing in Minnesota. Isn't that in Minnesota? Is that where that is? Is isn't that what the song never is? Seen it. I never did the, see the, it. the largest I ball of twine in Minnesota. Isn't that the yeah. the, the Weird Al song? I maybe. I, yeah, I don't know. Me, me and my wife were taking a cross country trip one time, and we're like, "Man, if we can, if we can find the world's largest ball of twine." This has been a long time ago, so you know, it wasn't like you could just. Uh, we didn't. We didn't even have cell phones or anything. So, so anyway, it never happened. But I would like to. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The touristy things. We when we're someplace as you know, as a band, if we're someplace that's got something, you know, significant. I mean, we'll get pretty nerdy when we were in Nuremberg. A couple of years ago, we we went to the uh, the trial. You know, you can you can see a museum dedicated to the Nuremberg trials. Sure, yeah. At, oh uh, no, that corner. yeah, that I love historical shit like that. Like when I was a kid, yeah, we totally did that across like going to like Yellowstone and like some like the Civil War battlefields and shit like that. Uh, it was totally rad. Yeah, so. Doing like the the Nuremberg trial thing, I would totally do that. Yeah, that was super cool. I mean, it's heavy, you know. It's a big thing. It's it's a it's a somber place, you know. And, and but it's but it was, it was, I'm glad I did it, you know, because we needed you were we there. Fuck, I think I think the uh, place we played, somebody said had been it was like a a punk collective kind of a situation. I think they squatted in an old building and then created a business out of it. I think that's like a thing you can do there. And, uh, but the history of the building where we played was that it was, uh, SS, uh, headquarters. Holy shit. We're like, fuck, look out, man. Nazi ghosts. (laughs) Dude, that's fucking wild as fuck. It's it's crazy. But I mean, now, now it's been turned into something good. Right. Awesome. It's a, it's a, it's, it's run like a nonprofit for the punk and metal scene in Nuremberg. 
So, right, <laughs> you know, him. they turn something shitty into something really amazing. Which I think is awesome. Yes, and that's what's awesome about the 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 scene in general is because that stuff happens. Yeah, there are some shit bags out there that get noticed, and and then you know they get their fucking just fucking becomings right. But the the shit that needs to get noticed like that, that is what it is. And that's what I love about the the fucking independent metal scene. Yeah, it's turned out to be kind of, you know, I was in punk rock bands as a kid and and, and in my my 20s, going around playing houses, playing, you know, whatever the fuck we could play, community centers, people would rent those things. Right. And essentially, this is what it feels like now. And I'm like, holy shit, this is that. It's just being done way better. <laughs> it's being, it's way more organized and, and well, uh, and that's and, the, and it's better. You know, better musicianship. Everything's a little, you know, the, the but the ethos is still there. And sure, it's, it's really awesome to see. Well, and that's the other thing too is, you know, where is the disconnect with? Okay, obviously, certain bands go over certain ones don't whatever but is like what is the cause of it is it necessarily we always talk about you know playing to your audience however what it what do you feel like your audience is at some point a lot of these people think it's their friends you know the ones that are you know the those the same ones you get mad at when you're in your 40s and that don't come out because the the kids you know and shit but like, you know, I think the metal scene suffers from playing too many twenty-one and up shows now. Uh, yeah, I mean, it should be. I I agree, actually. It's because I there's a lot of cool. You know, I, it's funny because for a long time I, I really just thought that things. Well, now now it, everything exists right now. Like everything that ever has been stylistically is being done by somebody of every age now, and it's kind of a cool time. Sure. Um, and and what you get is, I'll see these. Well, we practice next to a thrash band that I think they're in there. They might be twenty twenty one, something like that, and they are exactly what I was looking as far as what they sound like. They sound like what I was looking up to as a as a, a teenager, and, and I'm just like, holy shit! But now I'm I'm my age, <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and and you know that they're still doing it. They they, you know, they could be. You know, that's the thing. Bay Area, Bay Area, um, late eight, mid late eighties. Sure, and, and they're killing it. And, and I'm just like, yeah, it still exists, and and it all still exists because it should. And it doesn't need to be gate kept by old shits. Exactly. Carry forward through dudes who who you know have the wherewithal to do it. They got they got the energy and the balls and fuck it. They should be the ones doing it. Oh no, I totally agree with you because that you know metal is alive and well. It's just you you know you've really got to know where to look, and you know unfortunately with all of the. Um, with the not necessarily twenty one and up shows and shit like that, but the then you've got like the other shit like the Live Nation venues where it's only like tribute bands or cover bands and very uh, select tours anymore. Like I, I think this year the Uriah Heap Saxon co headline tour is in Live Nation venues uh, all through the Midwest. Um, but anyway, no. Um, yeah, I totally get that, and uh, you know, it's just well, like, you got to know where to look. I want to see that show, but at the same time, that that's not a good way to see that show. Yeah, you know what because I mean? you you it's almost like you're forced to support Live Nation, uh, which I I hate that. Yeah, it happens all the time. I mean, I had to, you know, I still can buy my Iron Maiden tickets when it comes time. Sure, I don't I don't love how that has to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which cryptid scares you the most? What's that? Which cryptid scares me? Oh, I love this question. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. Which one is it? Because you're, you're in North Carolina. Correct? Yeah. 
Yeah. So you you're you have the Appalachian uh, mountains and shit through there, and the uh, so you've got crazy shit that goes through the mountains that not everybody hears about, and 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 things. So I'm I'm interested to see what yours is. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think it'll be regional to to this area. Although, as far as Appalachian cryptids go, we did think about a year ago get to see the monuments of the Mothman um, in, uh, and I guess that's in uh, Mount Pleasant, um, West Virginia. I think it's West Virginia. Or yes. Ohio. So it was really cool to see. Yeah, we, and then we we've actually I think we're going to I think we're going to do a Mothman song just because because. We've now given Mothman a stupid name, and and we've we've made a lot of jokes. And Dude, it's going on, I on dig places. it. So, I, mean, I love I love the the Mothman story is awesome, but and and he's a good guy. I don't even you know that's it's not he's not a scary cryptid. Um, scary cryptid. I kind of love them all. They're, they don't scare. They don't, I don't find them scary. Um, what's the one? Oh, what are those ones that? You see a lot of, and I'm sure they're they're fake, but the the weird little little just looks like legs, spindly legs walking through the darkness. Those things are creepy as shit. Oh um, yeah, like the fucking uh, like the shadow people. I think somebody just figured out. A, I mean, it looks that you know it's spooky, and I'm like, hey, that looks nice and spooky. I mean, Ooh. I know it's somebody did a cool trick with their computer, but I do like it because you know I like I enjoy these things. Um, yeah, I want to make friends with all the cryptids. The right, cryptids don't don't scare me. I, th- I think uh, maybe one is there an underwater one that, that lives in lakes. I don't. I don't uh, want to there, there's been. I, I've heard of sharks in freshwater lakes before. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they can do that. Yeah, once they become ships, acclimated, they because do. they can Believe. swim in. Uh, they can swim into the fresh water like up in like Virginia Beach and shit. Yeah. And and go back out. But like being able to find a way into like an actual freshwater lake in like I don't know, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that that's unlikely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh but there's a I don't know like is there is a uh, the alligators in the sewer of New York is that considered a cryptid? Oh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty fun. And I mean, shit, I don't want to meet a chupacabra. You know, it's probably pretty. Dude, you know, I want a chupacabra cat. Yeah, they look like a little fucking rat. Honestly, oh, they make, that is a thing. They a are like so like sparse in hair, and they look. Adorable. <laughs> yeah, ratty, ratty cats are hilarious. Uh, I mean, I've, I confess, I, I I see cats on the internet, and and I do. Oh yeah. Pop, uh, I think every, I think it's to be in the, to be a metalhead. I think uh, that's what it is. Is you have must, to do you have funny. to have a healthy I mean, love or Holt, disdain of, of cats. Yeah, I follow Gary Holt, of course, because he's fucking awesome. But yeah, he does the happy catter day, and I'm just like, man, I love this dude from Exodus. Just, just loves goofy ass cat videos. Oh yeah, I'm pretty happy. And I love every, you know, like the thing with Gary uh, following him is funny because of that. The cats for one, and then he's always posting the shirts. But like, I don't know if like people keep fucking like tagging his shit and it getting him removed when like it's like the Richard Ramirez or the Jeffrey Dahmer the Ted Bundy shirts so he's like he's got like the ACDC bar over their eyes and shit <laughs> oh really I hadn't even yeah. thought that that's funny uh, or uh, they put the uh, they put the bar over the, the the kill in the kill the Kardashian shirt oh funny yeah I just, you know, being pragmatic Oh yeah, do- for sure. Uh, <laughs> have you ever fallen down a YouTube rabbit hole on a conspiracy theory? I have not, because again, this goes back to how I make difficult decisions being logic based. I if I subscribe to the, you know, the, the Occam's Razor and the, uh, I, I, there's a favorite, my favorite 
Carl Sagan thing is the, the, the God, what's it called? Oh, I can't remember the name, but it's basically it's a, it's a book about, he debunks a bunch of myths, a bunch of, you know, UFO theories and all the sorts of basically based on like, well, what's the most likely thing that, that causes this. And so all the conspiracy theories are like the, I don't know, like juiciest explanation you could possibly come up with that suits somebody's fucking worldview narrative. Yeah. That is, that is the least likely shit. And so you just like that, that's the simplest explanation to you. You know what I'm And so immediately I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going there. Right. So yeah, I enjoy the, the little montages of that flat earthers put up. That is funny. I've seen a couple of those. Oh yeah. Those and are great. Those are funny. Cause I'm just like, Oh, that confused you. With, uh, <laughs> <you know>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with that same concept, when it comes to, um, things like unsolved mysteries, do you believe that's like just another form of like conspiracy theory type media? They're fun they're because fun they're, story. they run like, if you think about it, that like, Whenever they do dra- uh, dramatizations on both sides of those, they're they're both very similarly produced. And man, I love the X Files. Yeah, you know? and yet you know, there's not a thing that's uh, ever been an X Files um, plot. There was something that I would really entertain as possibly being fact based. You know, it, or or you know the. The roots of them are in legends and stuff like that. And legends are awesome. They're they're cool stories because I love fiction and you know we all love mythology. Shit, you know. Obviously, both of our bands probably have you know have have subject matter about that because it's fun as shit. And and to try to connect it to the real world is uh, is tempting and kind of fun. I, when I was a kid, I loved watching. You know, Bigfoot documentaries where they're hunting Bigfoot or Loch Ness monster documentaries. They're hunting Loch Ness, and you know, they obviously they never find it. Right. And but you know, I I want them to. You know, I want it all to be real. Right. But I know it's the least likely thing. Right. Yeah. Like uh, my thing is like uh, uh, my mom loves uh, Oak Island. The Mystery of Oak Island on History Channel. Oh, what is that one? What's the Oak Island? Uh, that's the one like, where they think there was buried treasure by the Knights Templar back in like oh the seventeen or sixteen hundreds. And it's a pretty and, small island, man. I think I think we'd have found it. Well, yeah, but there was supposedly like a burial vault. It was down like two hundred and fifty feet or something, and and the island would collapse, or you had to go through it, or else it would flood the chamber and all this fucking like crackpot stuff. And, you know, it's the least. So there you go. And I told my mom, I was just like deep bunker. Yeah, exactly. I was like, you know, here's the thing about that TV show. It's like those shows are produced so far in behind the the actual event that it's happened that like you would have already seen a news article regarding it because as as you're watching the thing, you're like, well, this would have popped up. Yeah, this it would have been such old news because they're not going to there's no way that like a PR they're going to run it like PR, but, but you know, that gets into a whole, that gets into the conspiracy thing about, uh, news media. I <laughs> see what I did there. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so anyways, yeah. Um, uh, it would all be a very difficult thing to, it, it would all be very difficult. To, uh, right. Oh no, yeah. I totally it's more get difficult it. to fake than it is to just talk about them. You know, you know, it's just, yeah, people are, are not going to, do the hard stuff people are gonna just but i do love the unsolved like does i, I like those this bigfoot exists i want bigfoot to be real I, and and uh but you know he'd sure be pretty pretty crafty that would be a real real crafty guy to, yeah to only get that one set of, of footage of him i mean come on at this point yeah absolutely i sure uh, he's seen it but 
I, I, I'd, I'd like to, to meet a Sasquatch. I would. Probably rip yeah. me to pieces, but you know. Fuck yeah, man. Dude, Bill, thank you so fucking much, dude. This has been so awesome. Uh, I have one more question, but before we get to it, as always, links are listed below. So give a like, share, and a follow. Uh, go buy merch. Go see these dudes on tour. Fucking do anything and everything you can to support because you know what? This is where it is, you know? It's listening to podcasts, talking about cool fucking metal bands and Bigfoot and fucking conspiracy theories and what the fuck ever's because, hey, we're all fucking nerds at heart and it's all fucking metal and it's all fucking cool and be cool with each other. And, you know, that's how the fucking universe should be, I think. That's what I, that's just what I think. But, dude, do you have any shout outs you want to give to anybody today? Well, to, I mean, you, uh, I, I, you might actually, I don't, I've not been a big podcast dude, but this is, seems really fun. It's really awesome. So thank you so much for, for having me on there. And, uh, Fuck yeah, and man. Uh, shout out to all of our friends and, and, and I mean, hopefully we'll, we'll be doing shows with Mechanic Tyrants in, in Germany. Uh, we'll be playing, I think we're doing a chunk of the tour, knock on wood with Speed Queen from, uh, from Belgium. And then, uh, and you know, we're we're gonna play shows with all our buds here. Um, you yeah. should get Lords of the Trident on sometime. Definitely. Like, yeah, I need it, to have them on. I haven't. They've been I, one of the bands that's eluded me. me. Fuck is up. It's, you it's, know, he's, he's a, he doesn't. I don't think he sleeps or rests, but he does accomplish, and he is he's a hilarious, clever man. Sure. So, and also shout out to Chris, uh, your other guitar player, who's also in Children of the Reptile, who was on last year, uh, back in March when they put out their uh, newest album, and that will be in the archives. So yeah, well that's great. And you know he I, he 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 doesn't talk a ton. Sometimes I'm I'm Children of the Reptile. I think are quite possibly the technically. And, oh yeah. And, and feel phenomenal. Wise. Well, they're they're top notch and and maybe the best dudes going right now. Yeah, Ozzy is a great dude. I got to meet him at the uh, at the Steel and Stone Fest, and dude, like I know Jason from uh, Temptations Wings, Heavy Metal Wasteland, and Alehorn. Uh, he actually put uh, their album as his number one for last year. It's pretty crazy. And so Chris, yeah, Chris doesn't even tell us stuff that he's doing with that band sometimes because he thinks we don't give a shit. But I'm just like, man, you, you guys already, you know, I mean, I called The End the best record of, I, I guess it was 2017 when that came out. I was like, that's the best record that year. Nobody put out a better record that year. And, you know, he's like, ah, it's like a glass of gin. You know, it's like, this is around the time that you joined. But, man, fuck that. That band is the shit. They, they are. absolutely slay. And that's how, I mean, honestly, that's more or less how we, we've known Chris for for years and different things that he's been in, but that's the band that we're just like, holy shit! We needed a guitar player. We're like, what can he do? Can he do this? This is getting, he was you know like two guitar players back. He was the guy that that we went for, and just because I'm like, man, can he do? Can he get up here to play? Because he was living all the way down in Wilmington, and uh, and so it was like so long time coming kind of thing. When uh, when we were able to actually join for so now we're going to do a bunch of shows with you know it's, now it's so tempting you're gonna you're gonna do shows with with the band that you share numbers with and and so we're all double duty yeah you know. yeah well yeah you know. dude that's awesome though and I mean you know I want to do that too with with uh, Ice Howl and uh, Overload but uh, dude final question of the day are we a minuscule part of intelligent life in the galaxy. Ah, I like that one. I would, I would, I would wager just by the numbers. Of course, yes, we can't do well. I mean, humanity. I will frankly say is not really that fucking smart. So for sure, it's got to be better out there. Every you know, it's it's everybody's uh, tendency to to look at at what we've done as the pinnacle and this is this is why you know this is why liquid water exists so that you we can have life as we know it and we're the we're the be all and end all of it i'm like no man this is likely a failed experiment there will be 
obviously, you know, with all the numbers that you're looking at, the, the more we learn about the universe, the more we learn how yeah. many possibilities there must be. Yeah, man. How now, are as we, to not... we ever encounter any other form of intelligence? There's a big distance problem there, and, and travels and the science required to do that and all that sort of stuff. So, I, that, and that's my reason why I generally don't go the, I believe that we we've got aliens among us route because I'm just like, how the fuck did they get here, man? I know how, you know, I know how physics works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to some extent, you know, and, and so, and that's, that's Carl Sagan's take too. Uh, it's, it's, to, to just harp on that. But, uh, but yeah, man, of course, we, there's no way the, the human beings are the smartest fucking things. Out. That would be, a sad thing to find out. You know, <laughs> they they say that they okay. Here's my here's my theory on this really fast, and I'm just gonna throw this out here, and then we're gonna go to a song. <laughs> so we're not even gonna discuss it because I want people to discuss it down uh, in the uh, what did you think about this episode thing. So if you made it this far, so here's a concept to think about. Uh, so historians and uh, scientists have said that we as humans did not live at the same time dinosaurs did and okay but they also believe that dinosaurs uh, died from a meteor that hit earth and changed the uh, changed the uh, climate and all that shit right how are we to sit there and say that we weren't the meteor Oh, that's interesting. I mean, well, I look at everything pretty literally. Um, I do believe that all, all that did happen, kind of exactly as they've pieced it together. But yeah, as us being, huh? We're well, we're right. I don't know. Interesting, dude. Um, Bill, thank you so fucking much, man. Everybody, leave a leave a comment about that in the fucking uh, comments, and we'll I'll talk about them next week or whenever we do this. Uh, dude, thank you so fucking much. This has been fucking rad as shit. On our way out today, really fun. No, thank you so much. It's uh, yeah, yeah. I never know how these things are gonna go, but but this was a very cool, one, and I like I like the fuck yeah, man. That's what it's all about. It's all about like the whole fucking like deal of just chilling out fucking talking shop just hanging out that's what fucking metal's about you know it doesn't have to fucking be all this fucking bullshit fucking uh jargon fucking any of that shit you know it's just it's what it is we'll come to north carolina let's hang out let's play shows and maybe we get up to louisville that fuck is. yeah man uh Far. It's not that far. We do that. We can do that all the time. Hell yeah, season. brother! Absolutely. And dude, on our way out today from Showdown, what do you want to play? Uh from Showdown. Uh, what's my? You know, I I have an attachment to the Fury Road song, the uh, Grab the Sun song. I do love that song. It's it kind of goes all over the place. And so I don't know if if, if I got to pick. That's one I'll pick. Hell but yeah, they, man! They are all just kind of like a little roller coaster ride for me. So I'm, I'm still, we're still on a honeymoon. I'm on a honeymoon with that record. So, you know what I mean? Fuck yeah, man! I totally dig <laughs> it. <laughs> Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Dude, thank you. This is Grab the Sun. Yeah.
Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground. From the graves of all those unholy. And they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine! An independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats. They're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.com bigcartel.com What's up, Metal Forge fans? This is Alan Bishop, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest and head distiller at Spirits of French Lick. Do you find yourself drawn to the unexplained, fascinated by the Fortean, or enchanted by the paranormal? If the things that go bump in the night resonate in your mind, then tune into my brand new podcast, If You Have Ghosts, You Have Everything. Featuring first-hand accounts, collected stories, interviews, history, and speculation related to all things not of this world. Available now on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. Set back, relax, and remember, if you have ghosts, you have everything. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE10 to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Hey, Metalheads, it's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio, something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 
888-447-4750. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana is the premier 12,500 square foot music superstore that has served both Southern Indiana and Louisville, Kentucky metro area for over four decades. Originally founded by Marvin and Beverly Maxwell in the 70s, this gym remains a Maxwell family owned business. Mark Maxwell, along with his business partner, Whitney McNichol, continued the reputation as being the national resource for all things music. In 2022, the iconic Guitar Emporium of Louisville relocated to Maxwell's Music, creating the largest independently owned showroom in the region. The retail offerings at Maxwell's Music includes a huge selection of guitars, basses, amplifiers, effects pedals, modeling amps, keyboards, drums, banjos, mandolins, ukuleles, sound systems, stage lighting equipment, and accessories. The music education program at Maxwell's is second to none. From private instrument and voice lessons to DJ, EDM, recording, songwriting, and music theory, to Rock School, Weekend Warriors, and Maxwell's Music Lab, there is something for every age and every ability level. Down in repair land, guitar and instrument repairs and refurbishment are taken care of by the Maxwell's team of expert guitar technicians and luthiers. They also do appraisals of instruments as well. Maxwell's offers installations for professional audio, visual, and lighting systems for schools, churches, clubs, VFWs, funeral homes, sports fields, and so much more. There's also rentable space at Maxwell's, from the music practice and rehearsal rooms for the individuals and bands, all the way to a meeting space and concert venue that seats up to 120. That also includes a professional audio, visual, and lighting system and a sound booth. Maxwell's has it all. All this plus original functioning 1947 recording booth to make your own record. Go to the Guitar Hero Throne, to the very own Elvis statue, and don't forget the Harmony Green Pocket Park. There's a reason the Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana has been recognized by the National Association of Music Merchants as a number one award-winning best store design, as well as top 100 music store year after year. You gotta see it to believe it. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana. (laughs) 